What's up, Smart Homers? My name is Aaron, and in this video, I want to show you this new ceiling light from Akara, the Akara T1M, that I think has some pretty awesome potential. Akara sent me this product early to test out, and so far, I've been super impressed with it. This Zigbee ceiling light is actually composed of two different lights. There's the main light, and then there's an LED ring light around it. Now this light is Zigbee based, meaning that it doesn't work by itself and you need to have a Zigbee hub. It actually supports matter, but only if you use it with one of Akara's hubs, and I think right now it's just the Akara M2 hub. I'm going to show you how to use it with the Akara hub that they also sent to me, and I'm going to show you how to connect it to Home Assistant in two different ways. Out of the box, you get some mounting hardware, a manual, and the light itself. It's about 20 inches in diameter and 2.5 and inches or so thick. On the back of the light, you can see the mounting bracket, which is standard for US light boxes. Now, let's pop off the diffuser by twisting it. You can see this diffuser has a diffusion area in the middle for the main light, and then a white trim ring, and then a diffuser ring for the outer light. Under the cover, we can now see how this light is built. The main light is composed of two rings of LEDs. Some of them are warm, and some of them are cool white and the controller adjusts the brightness of these LEDs to set the overall warmth of the light. You can see the three push connect terminals for line, load, and ground. This light can be powered with 110 to 240 volts AC. Looking at the edge of the light, you can see that it's just an LED strip with some WS2811 ICs on there, I guess, to control each set of three LEDs. Installing this device is actually surprisingly simple, but I'm going to show you how just in case you want to see it. The first thing you need to do is kill power to the light that you're going to replace. I'm replacing this light bulb, so I turned off the light switch that was supplying power. It's also a good idea to turn off the breaker before starting this. I removed the light bulb and then unscrewed the fixture from the electrical box. This little screwdriver has been one of my absolute favorite tools for installing smart switches and outlets and things like this, so I'm going to leave a link to it in the description. Once that's unscrewed, I pulled a little slack in the wire that was connected to it and then unscrewed the terminal screws on the back to release the wires. Next, I snipped off the ends of those wires and stripped them to start with fresh ends of wire. Now, we need to take the mounting bracket off of the back of the light so that we can install it on the electrical box on the ceiling. Just unscrew those wing nuts and remove the bracket. I'm reusing the screws that were used to hold the light bulb fixture in place, but if you don't want to do that, you can use the ones provided to secure the bracket to the electrical box. Once that's secured, we're going to put the light up close to the ceiling, and then we're going to push the wires through the little rubber grommet in the back of the light. Once they're poked through, we can push the light up against the ceiling, allowing the studs on that bracket to poke through the corresponding holes in the back of the light. Then we just take the wing nuts and screw them onto the studs to secure the light in place. Once it's secured, we just need to install the wires. In the US, typically the black wire is the load wire, the white wire is neutral, and the bare one is the ground wire. Once installed, we can tuck them up nicely, and now we can install the diffuser. After that's done, we can turn the power back on, and you're going to see that the main light is on, and the ring light is lit up blue. First, I'm going to show you how to connect the light to the M2 hub, and then I'll show you how to connect it to Home Assistant. First thing you need to do is get the Akara app and set up your M2 hub. There are tons of videos out there that show you how to set up the M2 hub, but it's pretty straightforward, just powering it on, and then adding it in the app. Next, put the light into pairing mode. To do this, we just turn the power on and off to the light five times. We'll know it's in pairing mode because the main white light is going to pulse a couple times like it's breathing. In the app, just tap add device, search for the T1 light, tap that, and go ahead and add it. The Akara M2 hub should pick up the light right away. You go through the setup process naming each of the two lights. The controls are pretty straightforward for the main light, allowing you to adjust brightness and warmth of the light. It's actually surprisingly bright, which is nice if you need to really see what you're looking at. And I love how you can't see any of those individual LEDs. It just looks like a flat panel. The LED ring light though, that's pretty cool. It not only allows you to do a solid color, but it allows you to choose some pre-programmed effects, which I like a lot. Here's some B-roll of those effects. I really like the alert effect because you can use that as a security indicator. If something trips your alarm, you can have that light flash. 
You could also use it for notifications too, like if a door is left open or your mail arrives. Another cool thing is that you can create your own custom effects. And I won't get into all the details, but you can create your own palette and then choose your own effect style. I use the rainbow palette and the flow style, and then I save the effect. Now it shows up on the controls page, and I think it looks pretty cool. Just an FYI, I left the link in the description for this device, and if you use that link to buy it, I get a small commission at no cost to you. There are actually two ways to add this thing to Home Assistant, and the first way is using the Akara M2 Hub. Once your light is connected to the M2 Hub, you can add the M2 Hub and any devices connected to that to Home Assistant using the HomeKit controller integration. The hub will actually automatically be discovered by Home Assistant and you just need the HomeKit pairing code from the box to proceed with pairing. Once the hub is paired, you'll see the T1M is automatically discovered in Home Assistant and you can mess around with the controls. The controls are decent, allowing you to set the brightness and warmth of the main light, but it doesn't let you set any of the special effects for the ring light, so you're stuck with a solid color and brightness. The next way to add a Home Assistant is via the ZHA Zigbee Home Automation integration. It obviously requires you to have a Zigbee dongle work with Home Assistant, but then you just put it into pairing mode and it's picked up pretty quickly. In ZHA, you see similar controls, two light entities which can be controlled pretty much just how they were via the HomeKit controller integration. You can adjust the brightness and warmth of the main light and the brightness and color of the ring light. There are some controls for off and on transition times, brightness levels when turned on for each light, and also startup colors for each. I did try Zigbee to MQTT, but only one of the lights showed up at Home Assistant and it really wasn't working properly, so I decided to just wait. I'm sure that support will come soon at some point. So you might ask me, which is the best one to use? While typically I don't like relying on another hub other than my Home Assistant hub, to me, you get more features if you connect it to the Akara M2 hub first, because you get all of those effects. If you connect it directly to Home Assistant via Zigbee, you're not getting the advantage of the addressable LED strip ring light. It's a shame, it would be really cool if somehow those effects got transferred to Home Assistant over Zigbee, and maybe they will in the future, I'm not really sure. But for now, I'd say the best way to go is through the Akara M2 Hub. One other thing I wanted to note though is how you would use this with a smart switch. If you turn off a normal light switch, it kills power to whatever device it was being powered. This means that if you turn off the light switch that was powering this light, the light's no longer on and it cannot be connected to Home Assistant or to your car M2 hub. Even smart switches are going to kill power to whatever device is being powered unless they have smart bulb mode. Smart bulb mode means that when you press the switch on or off, instead of controlling the internal relay which allows power to the light, it's actually just going to send a message to your smart home. You can then use that message as a trigger to tell your smart home to turn this light on or off. In my case, I'm using a Zoos Z-Wave smart switch, putting it into smart bulb mode and then using an automation and home assistant to control it. A single press on the top of the paddle turns the main light on and a single press on the bottom turns it off. I then use a double press up or down to turn on and off the ring light. Anyway, I thought you might be interested in how I'm doing that, and I'll leave a link to that switch in the description as well. Overall, I think this light is pretty cool, and I like how the diffusers hide the individual LEDs, so you get this nice, clean look. I also like the white trim, and overall, I think it looks like a pretty cool, modern device. It really makes me want to build one of my own, and if you guys don't know, I do a lot of LED lighting projects, so it's a fun one that I would love to try. I also think this thing is huge huge at 20 inches in diameter and I wouldn't mind having a 15 or a 10 inch diameter one for smaller rooms like my bathroom where this one's just too big. I think that the ring light is awesome for notifications and while I'm probably not going to use it for that since it's in my son's room, I'll probably use it for a nightlight for him. It is kind of a shame that you can't control the effects directly in Home Assistant, at least I've not been able to, and that you have to use a car M2 hub, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion because those effects are really cool. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this one. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about something that I didn't address in the video. And if you like LED lighting videos and smart home videos, definitely get subscribed so you can see more when they come out. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.